In five minutes or less, I'm going to teach you everything that I know about Asana Forms. So if you're tired of receiving all of your intakes and requests through Slack, Teams, WhatsApp, email, then this is absolutely the video for you. Let's start the timer. So here we have just a basic project. As you can see, there's a form there. But when we navigate to the customize, we can see we can add additional forms. And so I'm gonna go and create one. Let's take a look at it. First thing you should know, you can add a cover photo to this. So if you wanted to add some branding and some colors to this, or at least a, a colorful header, you could put that in there. Then the form actually takes on the name of the project. So you're gonna to wanna to rename this to whatever you want. So intakes and requests, I would change this to submission. You can then update the description here uh, to say whatever you want. This is your message to the submitter to let them know what this form is used for, how they can get in touch with you if they need more support. Then I like this option right here. Um, if you have the ability to customize your logo in the admin console, it then it will show up here when you uh, submit that form. So forms are built on fields and we can also add and use custom fields inside of our forms. So you have our base fields where these can be entered and show up as text fields. Same with the email, that will show up as a text field. But then right up here, let's take a look at the options we have. So within this project, we have three fields. We have the status, and if I select them, they'll be added as options to our form here. And we can have priority, I'm gonna add that one in there, and then responsible department. Then I can update that, and you can see it's automatically named these field forms, form fields, um, based on that custom field. So I'm gonna keep that as priority. I'm gonna make it required status. We probably don't need this, you know, usually when it comes in, we create a rule to say that we wanna set the status as new requests. So I'm actually gonna remove that right there. And then responsible department, I'm gonna make that required. Now what's nice about this is that the responsible department, if they're to be working on it or you need them involved in the process and say we need finance involved because we need approval, there's branching logic in side of these forms. And so I click on that little branch right there, and then it opens up this option where I can now take a new question, click and drag and pull it right in there. So I can say finance needs or requirements. I can make this uh, required. I can choose if I want this to be text, single select, multi-select, date or number. I'm going to add multi-select and then we would have option one, option two, and so on. Now I can leave it at this and I can just have this be a field that once this is um, entered or an option is selected, it'll just show up in the description. But if we wanted to make sure that these selections actually showed up in a custom field, right up here, we can choose to connect it to an existing field, or we can start typing in something like this. And then we can add finance needs. Now this becomes a custom field that's been added to our project. We can later go in there and we can add it as a custom field to our library. We can have headers um, that we can click and drag in right from the side here, and we can call this intake info, and then it just separates all of our different fields and just adds a bit more organization to what we're doing. What I like about these forms, we can add in attachment options. Um, we can allow multiple attachments, files like so. And then we can have a few options here. So I'm going to go to our settings. We can uh, create a rule that changes, in this case, the, the status of the request. So we're going to have them show up in our new requests. But in order to do that, I actually want to send the form submissions to the new request section. Otherwise, it's going to put them in the first section that shows up. And so if you have another section where there's files or additional information, it'll go there. If we know we want to submit these forms and have them received by a specific person, there it is right there. And then we can go and we can copy um, all responses to the description. From here, we can set our different access permissions. And so anyone can access allows this form to be used externally outside of Asana. As you can see, there's some grayed out options here. If we wanted to allow the submitter to uh, receive an email from Asana, almost like a ticketing system, or have private comments inside of Asana, we can select these options. But at at this current time, it's only available to team members within the organization only. So once I click organization only, I then can add the submitter automatically. And as you can see, it's grayed out our email box. And then I can allow the recipient or the submitter to receive emails and for our team to send emails. So this is for people who aren't in Asana all the time, maybe leadership members, and you want them to be able to interact with you inside and out. 
Okay. The last thing I'll show you here is how you can name the form. So right now, when it comes in, uh, the task will be um, submitted under the form name. So every task will be intakes and request submission. And then um, we have the options. So we can have the person's name that's submitting it be the first thing, then the responsible party, and then finance needs as an option. So right now when this task comes in, it will be the name of the person submitting it, then the responsible party, and then finance needs. And in this case, um, that's option one or two. We can then publish this field. We can decide to share it with any teams who we want to have access to this, but we are ready to use our form. And so we go up here, we can now view it, and we're ready to start filling out our form for submission. Stop the timer. I don't know if that was five minutes or not. We'll find out after we edit this, but I hope this gave you a really um, good look into the possibility of forms, how to set them up, how flexible they can be, but explore it a bit more. The more custom fields you add into it, um, the more automations we add into it, the more powerful this system and these features can become. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.